Several weeks ago on this channel, we've taken a look at HDR, and in the same week, I did an episode of Pinpoint that actually showed off a plugin for GIMP called Advanced Tone Mapping. Now, at that point, I was still pretty new to that plugin, but I've been using it a lot in the meantime, and now I sort of have a slightly better understanding of how that plugin works. I really like the effect that the plugin can create, but if I had one gripe, it would be the fact that, you know, the four sliders don't really tell us a lot about what they are actually changing. So I decided, why not actually experiment and then try and see what those sliders actually mean. Then I decided, why not make a video about it? And we'll turn this into some sort of a tutorial slash experiments video. I'm going to start off telling you how to install the plugin, seeing as that that is slightly confusing as well. And then we'll jump into the four sliders. So yeah, this is just a bit of a laid back random Wednesday episode. And let's just explore the plugin and have fun. Anyway, we'll talk more about this after the break. Hello and welcome to another random Wednesday episode. So what we're going to do first is we're going to try and install this plugin. Let's try to get that out of the way first, seeing as that it is slightly confusing. GIMP actually has multiple folders in which, you know, all the plugins and scripts are stored. In this particular case, this is actually not a plugin, it is a script. In other words, it is actually some plain text you can open in a text file and you can sort of see what it does. But we're not gonna go there, we just need to understand that it's a script and it installs at a different place from a plugin. Anyway, to see where is the proper place to install this, you need to open GIMP, go to Edit, go to Preferences. In the left bar, look for Folders and basically expand that. Scroll it down and click on Scripts. You should see at least one folder listed there. I have two and basically these are the places in which the program will look for scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to the first of the two folders and I'm just going to copy the SCM file that I've downloaded that is the advanced tone mapping plugin and paste it into that folder. Since this is a script, you can actually call for a refresh within GIMP and what that does is GIMP will basically search through the scripts folder again to look for new items. If everything has gone well, you should be able to go to filters, enhance and right on top, you should be able to see advanced tone mapping. And once you have that, you're ready to actually jump in and use this effect on your pictures. So all right, time to go to the fun part. Basically what I have here is a picture that I took just roaming around the streets. Now, this picture is exposed correctly, albeit not exposed well. You see, it's exposed correctly because it has detail in basically every part of the image except a little bit here and there. As you can see, there is a very big difference in brightness at that particular point of time. The outside of the shop is well lit, but the inside isn't. Despite that, I've, you know, chosen an exposure that happened to capture everything, even though the inside of the shop looked really dark. The whole idea of tone mapping is it keeps the bright parts bright, and it makes the darker parts brighter, so that the whole image looks more even. In order for this to work in the first place, you're going to need details in both the bright and the dark parts of the image. If I have underexposed this image, what's going to happen is the details in the darkest parts all the way at the back of the shop are going to be lost. And if that is the case, no magical plugin in the world can actually bring back the detail in that area. So just bear that in mind before you apply this to any photo. So what we're going to do is we're going to experiment. What I've done is for each one of those sliders, I've basically you know, just set them from zero and then apply them again and again as I increase the values. And what that creates is some sort of an animation of, you know, the slider value increasing and its effect on the image. I've decided to start with the copy setting with everything else at the default values. As you can see, this is me slowly increasing the copy setting. As you can see, the difference is huge. At one copy, the effect is very subtle. In fact, you barely know the effect was applied at all. As we increase the number of copies, notice that the effect becomes greatly exaggerated. At a certain point, it still looks kind of stylistic. Then, past a certain point, you'll probably never use it. 
My conclusion is you could sort of take this like a contrast setting. It is a measure of how much the darker parts are going to get brighter and how much the brighter parts are going to get darker. I normally keep this anywhere between 2 and 5. In fact, 5 is pushing it most of the time. It's more between 2 and 4. It of course depends on whether you want this to be stylized or if you want it to be subtle. Okay, the next thing to look at is the blur setting. This blur is expressed as a percentage of the size of the image. And this is actually one of the selling points of the script. Remember how I said the philosophy of tone mapping is to keep the relative contrast of areas close together the same, whereas the contrast of the entire image as a whole can be different? Well, the blurring setting controls how much an area actually is. So it controls what is the size of an area that has to have contrast relatively the same. As you can see from my experiments, the more blur you have, the less splotchy patches you're gonna get. As the amount of blur is reduced, you start to realize that alright, there's a patch here that is being brightened, and right beside it, there's a patch that is getting darkened. When you bring the blur all the way down to zero, there is basically no blurring, and the whole image looks extremely flat, because nearly everything has been brought up to the same contrast. In fact, as a point of interest, I've also generated the histograms for basically all the images in this experiment. Notice how that as blurring decreases, so does the contrast of the image. The whole histogram basically comes together and converges towards a point. So my conclusion about blurring, well, it's one of those settings that you know you have to tweak depending on how stylized you want things to look. The lower the blur, the more at risk you are of seeing fringing effects. When you turn up the blur to a large percentage, the effect becomes more subtle. Depending on your image, anywhere between 10 to 80 percent is okay. I've never gone lower than 10 because, well, you start to see that really strange sort of no contrast effect. Bringing the value above 80 seems to tweak the contrast of the entire image as one, so not a very useful thing to do. Moving on to the next setting, there is opacity of the merged layer. Now, I realized from my experiments that this one is kind of meaningless and simply because this is basically just how much intensity of the effect there is. What this means is instead of tweaking this here, I would rather you set it just to 100% because advanced tone mapping actually gives you the result on a new layer. What you can do is you can just use the opacity of that layer to sort of tweak it and bring in the old image as much as you need to. This of course beats running the entire plugin all over again because of course that takes time. Just use the layer opacity if you need to sort of bring down the intensity of the effect, even though personally I've never seen a need to really do that. Moving on, we look at the opacity of the blurred layer, which of course as mentioned earlier, brings up the brightness of the darker areas and reduces the brightness of the brighter areas. As you can see from the experiments, having it at zero creates a very dark picture, and then as we move up, the picture gets brighter and brighter to an extent where it looks far too bright. It appears to me like a brightness setting, and I've never really tweaked this, or rather I've never really liked the results of tweaking it. I've always left it at the default of 75%, though if you ever felt a need to sort of fine tune the look, anywhere between 70 and 80 is probably alright. And there you go, that is the four sliders, now we sort of understand the meaning of them. Of course, as mentioned in the pinpoint episode where I talked about this plugin, there is a slight issue with it. Let's take this picture for example, there is a very dark region on one side and a very bright region on another. What happens is no matter what combinations of settings you use, you will get an artifact that kind of looks something like this, where the dark part is being emphasized too much and the bright part is being darkened. I've tried many combinations of settings, but it seems that it's not very easy to actually prevent this from happening while still having a decent effect happen to the rest of the picture. So your workaround for this is to simply take the lasso tool and roughly select around the affected part. Go ahead and turn up feathering. You can use a very large number, I'm using like 300 over here. And then simply go into the levels tool and manually bring up the brightness of that area. It's not the most elegant solution in the world, 
But since this happens to normally large areas in the image, it can be easily fixed with the lasso tool. And there you have it, that is the advanced tone mapping script. This is a tool that, you know, in the past I've never thought I needed. And now that I have it, I feel like I'm using it on very many photos. In fact, I seem to be using it on every single one of the photos that I've taken in my last photography trip and posted online. It's definitely a very useful tool. It lets you do things with the exposure of an image that you normally cannot do with just the levels tool or the curves tool. So yeah, it's a very useful tool to have. It's definitely recommended by me. Anyway, that's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on photography and image editing subjects. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.